Hi, I'm Pastor Jack Davidson. Welcome to an abbreviated worship service for Sunday, May 22nd, 2022. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Our text for today is a portion of the Gospel lesson, John 16, 22 through 24. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, Jesus says, and your hearts will, re will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Till now you've asked nothing in my name. Ask, you will receive, that your joy may be full. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of Jesus, dear friends. Chase Gibson was in sixth grade when Vicki Carrollwicks, president of Wallace State Community College in Alabama, came to speak to his class about the importance of going to college. During her talk, she asked how many students plan to graduate from high school and attend college, and hardly any hand went up. Vicki tried to coach them into at least thinking about finishing high school and going to college, but no one was willing even to consider it. So the president of Wallace State Community College made them an offer. Chase Gibson was all ears. Then six years later, Chase showed up at the college one day to see Vicki, who was still president and still is president of Wallace State. Summoning the, all the courage that he could muster, Chase went up to the president and asked, Ma'am, you spoke to my sixth grade class a few years ago, didn't you? She said, Well, yes, I did. Chase went on and said, When you spoke to my class, you remember what you said that day? Vicki smiled and said, yeah, I, I remember what I said that day, but do you remember what I said that day? Chase looked her in the eyes and said, You told us that if we would remind you that you promised a scholarship to go to college, that you would give us one. The president never flinched and said, well, yes, I did make that promise. Thank you for remembering that. Chase went on and asked, is it going to be a full ride? And the president of Wallace State said, absolutely. Yes, it is. Well, that year, Chase received the presidential scholarship to Wallace State Community College. Not because he earned it or deserved it. It's because he received it because it was offered and he asked for it. That first Holy Week, when Jesus met with his disciples, Jesus told them, a little while and you'll see me no longer. And again, a little while and you'll see me. The disciples had all sorts of questions. When they discussed this among themselves, they were getting no answers. Jesus, though, knowing what they were talking about and knowing that they wanted to ask him a question for an answer, tried to prepare them for the day that was coming. The day when he was going to go to the cross and die, and then three days later rise again. That's why Jesus said, So you'll have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. The disciples were saddened at the news, at the prospect of Jesus dying. Their hearts and lives were filled with sorrow, for they thought if Jesus died, all is lost. There's no hope, for if Jesus only died, then what would they do with their lives? How would this death affect them? How could they go on living? Jesus only dies, then sin and death and Satan wins, because then death defeated Jesus, just like death tries to defeat every human being. If death wins, there's no hope. When there's no hope, there's no joy. But Jesus makes this promise. He reminds them that they will see him again. The resurrection is coming, Jesus says. And then three days later, after his death, Jesus indeed did rise, defeating sin, Satan, and the grave for each and every one of us. He died willingly, laying down his life so that, in his words, he might take it up again. And because of the resurrection, the lives of those who followed Jesus were changed in dramatic ways. On Pentecost, the Holy Spirit fell on the apostles and other believers, and the Holy Spirit continues to lead the church and fall on people that they might believe in Jesus and live out their lives to the glory of God, believing in Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus' resurrection changed the apostles' lives. No longer did they live for themselves, they lived for Jesus. And they became powerful witnesses to everyone around, pointing to Jesus, who is the Lord and Savior of all. Their lives were filled with joy and hope. Living in the light of lo and love of Christ, they had the joy that lasts. Jesus' resurrection turns all of our sorrows in, into joy that lasts. Granted, we're not the apostles. 
times we're living in today are drastically different than they were over 2,000 years ago. But what is the same is Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And just as Jesus gave to those first Christians his spirit, so Jesus gives you today his Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit points you to Jesus, the one who lived, died, and rose again. Good news of Easter gives you and me lasting joy, because Easter proves that the devil and the enemies of God did not win and cannot win. Jesus has won, because Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, and he will return again, just as promised. This time in glory, though, and we will see Jesus again. And he will keep his promise of bringing us to our eternal home. There, there will be no more sorrow, no more pain, no more sickness, no more death, no more sin. We will truly have the joy that lasts forever. A joy that will never be taken away from us. But until that time, Jesus calls us to love him, follow him, and serve him. And to be honest, living life in this world during these times, it's filled with all sorts of challenges and problems. If you're like a lot of people, you have a lot on your plate today. Things that cause you to stay awake at night, worries and concerns that you have about yourself, about your family, about the world in general. It can be overwhelming when you take into account that not only your issues cause you sleepless nights, but other people have other issues that cause them sleepless nights as well. How can any of us have the joy that lasts the joy that lasts is yours today, all because of Jesus. And you have that joy, because in baptism, God has made you his own. You are his child. He's called you by name. You belong to him. And he washes away your sins by the power of the Holy Spirit in baptism. Your sins are forgiven, and that joy gives you a right relationship. That faith gives you a right relationship with God, your Heavenly Father, and gives you joy, because you know God is on your side. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. You know that Jesus is alive today and he's willing to help you and ready to help you for he's an ever-present help in times of trouble. All you have to do is go to him in prayer and ask. Doesn't Jesus say, ask and it'll be given to you, seek and you'll find, knock and the door will be opened? If you're like many, you feel uncomfortable asking Jesus for what you need. Maybe you feel uneasy going to the Lord in prayer. Perhaps you think others have it worse off than you. Why should God listen to you? Maybe you feel guilty in praying for help in the issues that you have. Maybe you, maybe you wonder if God even knows your name, cares about you, and will hear your prayer. Maybe you even think, why should the Lord even hear my prayer and answer me? The Bible says you have not because you ask not. Jesus loves you with an everlasting love. Now nothing stands against you. Christ is for you, with you, and he delights in you. And he delights in your prayers and petitions. He loves you more than you can imagine, more than anyone else can love you or ever will love you. Jesus wants you to ask him what you need. That's why Jesus says, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will glorify me. Jesus stands ready and willing to not only hear your prayer, but answer your prayer according to his will for your good and to his glory. So bring your puzzled look, your naughty problems, your unusual requests to him. Go to him in prayer and let Jesus figure it all out. Pray, pray, and pray even more. Pray without ceasing. For when you go to him in prayer, trusting in him not only to answer prayer, but do it in a way that is good for you and to give glory to God, then Jesus will give you the peace of mind that surpasses all understanding and gives you then the joy that lasts forever. To the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the peace of God and the joy of Christ be with yours, be you and yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing of the Lord our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, 
fellowship of the Holy Spirit being abide with you now and always. Amen. Thank you for watching this service, a sermon coming to you from Redeemer Lutheran Church for May 22nd, 2022. If you have no church home, we invite you to make Redeemer your church home. We'd love to have you as a part of our family. We worship every Sunday at 1015, where a different message will be proclaimed. If you'd like to support this ministry with your tithes and offerings, please do so by sending your checks and tithes and gifts to Redeemer Lutheran Church, 1400 Concordia Drive, Lancaster, Ohio, 43130. May the Lord bless you and keep you.